Now, I love programming Arduino. Man, if you're trying to start off building robots, I think Arduino is the perfect place to get started. But if you're ready to take things to the next level, I highly suggest checking out the ESP32. I am continually surprised by this little chip. I mean, not only does it have Wi-Fi built in, it has Bluetooth built in, the ability to use BLE. I mean, it's even got its own wireless communication protocol that allows you to communicate over hundreds of feet without Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. And did you know you can interface a PS3 controller directly with the Bluetooth on the ESP32? I did not. So I wanted to explore that a little bit. And so today's video is all about how to take a PS3 controller connect it to an ESP32 and use that data to control something. Um, I thought it'd be fun to use this to, to uh, control a robotic arm. And so that's what we're doing today. Now, one of the coolest things about this whole process is just how easy it is. So it's totally possible to connect a PS3 controller uh, to a standard Arduino, but the only downside is you need a USB host shield and a Bluetooth USB dongle. So not only is that higher cost, but you're also stuck to using the Uno or the uh, 2560 form factor. And so it's, it's just incredibly easy with the ESP32, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to make this video. And so the first step is we need to get the MAC address of the PS3 controller. So uh, that's even how standard PS3 consoles paired with controllers is they uh, communicated with the MAC address. And so we need to do the exact same thing here. Uh, but one thing that's really cool is there are a couple of people who have created programs that make this super easy. So in this example, I'm using the six axis pair tool. And so all you have to do is plug in the PS3 controller to your uh, computer and it'll recognize what the MAC address is right here. So in this example, my MAC address is 01020304050506. Super, super, super easy to memorize. Um, I've also seen uh, 00112233444455. Um, and I think there are a couple other example ones I'm just using a regular generic PS3 controller, um, and there may, I'm sure there's a more sophisticated MAC address for an actual genuine PS3 controller. Um, but what's cool is you can also put whatever MAC address in you want. And so that means that if you have, say, like three or four of these things controlling three or four different robots, and you don't want any communication error, um, it's not going to happen. So because we're communicating via MAC address, it's not like there's going to be signals crossed. Um, like if you're using Wi-Fi, uh, I'm sorry, uh, radio or something like that. So it's super, super easy. So right now, all we need to know is that our MAC address for this controller is 01020304056. Now that we have the MAC address for our PS3 controller, in order to get this thing connected, all we have to do is make sure we paste that MAC address into our PS3, con PS3 controller code. And so this right here is actually just the demo for the uh, PS3 ESP32 library. And I'll be sure to post the uh, link to the library file um, in the tutorial online and also the video description here. Um, but this is a really, really cool library. There's a lot of uh, features in here um, that are pretty fun to mess with. And so this first part of the code, so everything up here, this is just getting the data from the D-pad and the uh, square triangle uh, X and circle buttons and then the joystick stuff and all of that other stuff. Um, but down here in the void setup, this is where you have to paste in that MAC address. And so if you changed your MAC address or you have a different one, this is where you have to paste it in. So here we see I have the exact same MAC address as I did before. So the next thing you're gonna wanna do is go ahead and upload this example code to your ESP32 ESP and we'll get these things connected. Okay. So we found the MAC address of our PS3 controller. Uh, we copy and pasted that MAC address into the Arduino sketch for the demo code, and we are ready to pair. Um, and so the pairing process is really, really easy. Um, if you have the uh, Arduino code loaded onto the ESP32 uh, and you have it powered on, then you are ready to pair. And so all you need to do, just like with a regular PS3, is uh, hold the middle button down. It'll blink for a few seconds, and if everything goes to plan, you'll have that light on. Um, and so there are a lot of really cool features in the Arduino code that we have running for this thing. Um, like you can change the light that's shown right here. Uh, I think you can even read the battery level, which is really, really cool. Um, and obviously get data from all of the, uh, the buttons here. Um, another really cool feature is you can actually read the analog press on these buttons. So like how hard you're pressing. I haven't written any code using that stuff yet, but it's just really, really versatile. Um, so obviously I'm running a super generic PS3 controller. 
Um, and I've, I've actually had really good luck with these guys. So obviously this isn't a genuine PS3 controller and I wouldn't waste your money if you're just using this to uh, drive a robot around. Um, so when you're using an ESP32 with an external antenna and one of these generic uh, PS3 controllers, I've still had range of like 500 plus feet. Uh, I'm actually super bummed. It's raining really hard today, and I uh, I wanted to go measure. Uh, I picked up one of those measure wheels, uh, but that'll have to be for another video. Uh, for now, you just have to take my word for it. Um, they are uh, surprisingly good in terms of range. Okay, so we are paired right now. Let's go ahead and open up the Arduino sketch, and so we can start to see if we can get the data from our buttons. So with a controller paired, all we have to do now is open up the serial monitor uh, to check to see if everything's working here. Uh, so keep in mind with the um, ESP32, you want to have make sure you have the baud rate set at 115,200. Um, and so if you open up the serial monitor, you'll see that all that's looping through are the LEDs that represent the uh, the players. And so that's just an example of what you can do with this. Uh, and so the uh, the very first thing it'll do, it'll tell you uh, that it's connected and that you have uh, the battery status of the, of the controller, and then it'll cycle through the players. But if you start moving around some things and pressing some of the buttons, you'll see that we are, in fact, getting all the data we need. And so uh, here we have the X, circle, square, triangle. We've got the shoulder buttons, the, the uh, trigger buttons. We've got our D-pad, and we have our analog sticks with the click buttons activated. And so we have access to every single button on here. Um, and what's really cool is uh, because you have things like um, pressing and releasing, um, you also have the analog data from the, uh, the buttons. Uh, there's a lot you can do with this. Uh, and so our whole goal is not to just simply see this stuff on the screen. We want to be able to use this stuff. And so um, well, all I did here was I, I took this information and got rid of everything I didn't need to move around the robotic arm and then added in the servo code. And so uh, what we'll go ahead and do is look at that thing next here. And so I'm going to make sure to post this example um, and also the other code here um, in the description for the video and also our tutorial here. But let's go ahead and move over to that other bit of Arduino code so we can see uh, what we need to use to uh, control our robotic arm. Okay, so here we have the stripped down example here that's going to let us control our robotic arm. And so um, uh, here I'm using the ESP32 servo library. Uh, there are other ways to control servos using the ESP32, but I wanted to keep this example as simple as possible. Uh, and so if you're used to regular Arduino servo code, this is going to look really, really, really similar. Um, in terms of my variables here, I noticed there was some conflict with using R and X, uh, RX, RY, LX, and LY. That's why I have this lowercase R and L, uh, which may look a little bit weird, but um, it, uh, it doesn't conflict with the internal library, which is really nice. Um, okay, so I have declared some servos. Now I set all of my uh, servos to start off at 90 degrees. So I wanted to have a really nice start position. So that way, every time the ESP32 boots up, the robot arm is, uh, is right where I want it to be. And so I basically uh, set them all to 90 degrees and then built the arm in the position I wanted around it. Um, okay, so there are a couple of ways you can do this. Um, this is how I chose to do it this time here is all I did was I took the analog data and stored it in a new variable. So that way I can kind of separate the two and do whatever I want to, um, to this variable right here. Um, I noticed some interesting, interesting stuff when I didn't kind of isolate these, uh, these, these uh, variables here. And so this is how I, I pulled it off. I'm sure there are a couple different ways to do it. Um, then I'm just printing that information back. So that's super, super straightforward. Um, and so at this point, when I was writing this code here, I figured I had, I had two options. One, I could use the math map command. So uh, mapping the variables together. So that way there's a direct relationship between the servo, the servo position and the joystick position. Um, but whenever I'm doing robotic arm stuff, I really like to create position variables. So that way the, the servo will stay where I left it. Um, one of the downsides of using the map command is that way is that if you let go of the joystick, the servo pops back to position. And so by using these position variables, um, you can have the servo stay in the position um, that it was last at when you take your hand off the joystick. Uh, so it makes it easier for accuracy and accuracy and stuff like that. And so in this case, um, whenever you're moving the joystick, the raw data will give you, will give you positive 127 and negative 127 when you move the joystick forward and backward. That's both in forward, backward, left, and right for both the joysticks. And so I have this double condition here. 
All this is saying is that if the left joystick y-axis goes less than negative five, which zero is the middle. So all that means is I'm pressing it down and my position variable hasn't already reached the maximum 180, add to the value of position. So if you remember the value of position, position R in this case was 90. And so if I hold the joystick uh, down, right, then add to position R. So it goes 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, and keeps going until it reaches 180. And so then all, I do, all I'm doing here is telling my servo to respond to whatever number that is. And so it's, it's kind of strange, it's kind of counterintuitive, but all this code is doing is that, is that the, the joystick is making the number position R greater or smaller. And the servo is responding to whatever number, whatever that number happens to be. And so in that way, having that disconnect, that second level uh, makes it so that way um, your control is really, really smooth here. And so this is just a super simple example. And so in this case, uh, LY and RY and RX were what I decided to use. Uh, so in this case, I have my right servo code. So I'm making the right servo move forward and backward right here. And then I have my left servo using the RY data moving forward and backward. So that's the right servo and the left servo taken care of. Now here's servo B, that was B for base. Um, so uh, we're doing the exact same things. In this case, I'm using the X axis because I wanted to use the side to side of that right joystick. So um, for the claw itself, I have servo C, C for claw. All I did here was I, uh, I had it respond to L2 and R2. Those are those um, trigger buttons. And this is super straightforward. So uh, if the button has changed, therefore it's pressed, go ahead and go to 120. Otherwise, uh, if the R button, R trigger is pressed, then uh, move the servo to 160. Um, one thing I will say is that putting the claw together for the uh, Mi arm, uh, the robotic arm that I'm using here, um, is probably the hardest part. So you, you really wanna be careful with these servo values. Um, they may not be the exact same if you're doing something else, but um, I would start off with these values. They worked pretty well for me. Um, okay, and other than that, this is all the exact same. And so in the void setup here, the only difference is that we have um, attached our servos to the, uh, the pins that we wanted to use on the ESP32. And the first thing I have the servos do is go to that position. So that way I always know where the servos are gonna start off. Um, other than that, look at our void loop. It's super, super tiny. Um, and uh, keep in mind, this delay is what's standard in this example code. And um, it doesn't mean that you're only getting data every two seconds, because that'd be super, super slow. Um, but in essence, this is it. And so it's, it's pretty straightforward. I wanted, to, I wanted to keep this code as bare and as readable as I possibly, possibly could. Um, and so it's a pretty simple example here. Um, but let's see, uh, now that we have this code figured out, let's go ahead and we'll upload this code to the robot arm. Uh, we'll pair the controller again, and then we'll see what we got. So for this example, I'm using a classic Mi arm. Um, now I will say there are bigger, badder robot arms out there, certainly. Um, but I've got a really soft spot for the uh, the Mi arm. You know, I think this is like the first robotic arm that a lot of people make, and for years it has been um, built and and just designed and hacked, man, all over the world. And so this is just a classic Mi arm, super basic, um, but it provides us an opportunity to uh, test out some really really cool stuff. And so. Um, right now, I've got a super simple driver board. All this, all this PCB is right here is uh, a socket for the ESP32, the four servo connectors, uh, and a DC power jack. If you uh, if you want to add additional power, or you can run USB. It's not a huge deal. Um, I also kind of randomly included uh, a two-pin header for uh, an FPV camera. Um, I usually uh, add cameras on robot arms when I'm doing stuff in class because it's really really fun. Um, so I'll go ahead and post this board. Uh, as well as, of course, all the code and stuff to, uh, to the blog post and in the video description. Um, but I've actually got a bigger, badder uh, ESP32 robot arm driver board that I'm really excited about. It's in production right now, and so I'm hoping it's going to be available next week so I can make a video about it. And that'll be for a larger servo. 
uh, servo driven robot arm, um, and also for like a laser cannon kind of project. I've got a lot of really fun stuff uh, I'm excited about for that. Um, but in terms of this project right here, so this is some really good example code for controlling any servo based robot arm uh, with the PS3 controller. So one thing that's kind of cool about the Mi arm, if you notice, there are two servos here, uh, and one controls in and out, and the other up and down. Um, now, that may not be the best descriptor for it, but that's usually how I refer to these things. Um, and so, I use the two joysticks, left and right, in up and down to control that movement. And I chose to make the spinning of the robot arm this joystick right here. Now, you can absolutely, if you wanted to, uh, map the uh, claw servo to this joystick. I actually chose to use the uh, triggers. I thought that'd be kind of fun. Um, and that was just for the heck of it. So, it's uh, PS3... Uh, PS3 ESP32 library has some really awesome, awesome features in it. Um, and so I highly suggest you check it out. It's really, really fun. Um, but other than that, that's pretty much all we have for you guys today. Um, so I hope that this uh, video helped you understand just how easy it is to connect that PS3 controller to the ESP32. Um, and I've used this thing for other robots before too, and it's really, really fun. So uh, pick up a PS3 controller, man. Mess around with it. Thanks for watching, guys.